in the feeding of the 5,000, just think about the small boy. He was the one who had the resources. But something had to help him recognise that he had the resources. Someone called forth those resources. Now that is what we've got to get better at in the church. It's about saying, you have the resources. You've got the experience. What we need to help to give you is a framework in which to put the understanding you already have. This is not about acquiring new knowledge. It's about acquiring a language to understand what you've already experienced. We haven't connected our experience with that reality. And then we haven't said, actually, we do have some answers to that. We do have a framework of faith. If we go back into the stories, we see that from a person becoming aware of their resources and offering those resources, I mean, it must have been a terror. I often think of that small boy. It must have been a terrifying moment. I mean, these small children, as we know, were not highly regarded, just as women weren't highly regarded at the time. You know, there were these five people, probably mostly men, um, were all gathered on this hillside. And this one boy suddenly looking around thinking, am I going to tell them I've got this stuff? I mean, you can imagine what it felt like, but he, somehow he got the courage to recognise his resources and he was given an opportunity to offer them. After we looked at why we should know and articulate our faith, let's look at how. So, we know the reason. Now we said, yes, we want to be more confident in our faith. We want to articulate it, to share it with others. How do I do that? Well, the first thing comes to, to mind is, well, get educated about your faith. This is a process, and the process is a never-ending thing, so that we make sure that our faith doesn't stop at a certain age in, in knowing, in studying, exploring the faith whether going deeper in the life of prayer, whether uh, going deeper in studying the scriptures, uh, in conversation with other believers around us, and uh, sharing our experiences with other Christians. This is the process I meant that it has to be non-stop and going on. I would hope that Christian leaders uh, would take the opportunity to enable folk to share in ways that makes it as natural as possible. Um, and I think any training about one's faith is about enabling people to actually own the faith for themselves, rather than to be able to, uh, as it were, regurgitate somebody else's words. Faith, to me, is about being able to understand it and, and inculcate it that in my own life. Um, and, and therefore, I think there is an increasing responsibility on all of us as Christians to be able to enable others to own the faith for themselves. So it's, it's, it's a training, I think, of any uh, sharing, uh, an understanding of faith, that it should be very much an integrated approach. We should educate ourselves about our faith. How do we do that? One of the steps we should be doing all the time is taking the most sacred and most important document we have about our faith is the Bible, the scriptures. This document that witnesses uniquely to the act of God in the human history in Jesus Christ. Often when we have questions about our faith, we will need to turn to the Bible for answers. And we have in the four accounts of Jesus' life all kinds of question and answer sessions. Jesus himself asked a lot of questions of those around him, and his disciples were quick to say to him, Teacher, what does this mean? And he gave answers quite fully uh, to their questions. So their questions are often our questions. His questions to them 
are often his questions to us and we will be well equipped in life if we can look at the Bible account of these interactions and benefit from them today. Through the Gospels, through the uh, Scriptures, through the New Testament and the Old Testament, we know how God dealt with humanity. God came to us in Jesus Christ and the New Testament tells us this story, this fantastic story of what happened. And it witnesses to the ultimate word of God, who is Jesus Christ. And let's remember what St. John said in his Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That was in the beginning with God. So the Word of God, the ultimate Word of God, was God himself. So he was the message and the messenger. And this we learn from the Bible. We shouldn't forget that the Bible is a library of books. Different books, different styles, and different emphasis. Our responsibility is to take this library and study it and immerse ourselves in it and see what the risen Lord has to say to us through the scriptures. God talks to us through the scriptures and makes our faith alive that we can share it. The center of the scriptures is the risen Lord himself because Jesus always taught the scriptures and interpreted the scriptures around himself. So we should learn from the Lord himself how to understand the scriptures, how to use them. And that is to make the risen Lord the center of our studies, the center of the, of the gospel, the center of the Bible, the center of all our attempts to go deeper and wider in our faith and study this wonderful uh, library we have. Studying the, uh, the Bible and learning about our faith helps us to build a better and livelier relationship with God. But there is something else which opens the channel with God, which is the life of prayer. Prayer is not always an incident. It's not always that I, I stand and close my eyes and bring my hands together and say, Lord, thank you for so and so and I want so and so. It's, this is an incident that I am, I am talking to God. This is, this is not what all our understanding of prayer. Prayer is a process, is an ongoing communication with God. Let me take an analogy of a, a friendship. When, when I'm in a relationship with, uh, with, a, with my best friend, it's not only I'm in, commu in communion with this friend, not only when I'm talking with them, also I'm in communion with them in my heart because I think of them, I pray for them, I thank God for them, and they do the same for me. So the channels of communication is always open with the other, with my best friend. And when we, when we touch base, we just catch up. That is exactly with God who is listening to us all the time, present around us and in us all the time. So prayer is being this in, in a state of, of communication. And it, it, it's, it's, it's a state of being with God. It's a state of opening our hearts to the love of God and responding to God and say yes to his love. Yes to what he did in, in Jesus Christ. This yes to God, this response to God is an ongoing thing. And this process is prayer. 
For 2,000 years, Christians lived their faith and interacted with their environment and wrote about their experiences, communicated their faith in different ways. And we have this in front of us, in, in our hands. So it is an education when we go to our tradition, go to our uh, uh, church fathers and church people who, who gave a lot of themselves to record their experiences and lives and sharing their faith. And this is also a way to educate ourselves about our faith. Um, you are taking now this workshop. This experience is also education. For me, talking to you through the camera is educating myself. So it's, it's an ongoing, ongoing process. The more, I, the more I share my faith, the more I grow in my faith. The more I uh, express it, the more I try to articulate it, the more I, I am aware of it, and the deeper I go in it, and the more confident I am in my faith. For those who are fearful, who lacks the confident, uh, the confidence to, to, to speak out about their faith, we have to start small, I guess. We can't just sort of get them from A to Z. And uh, what we need is a forum where those people can begin to share what does my faith mean to me? Because ultimately, if it is just something in a book that we pick up, that we open up one day per week, close again, it's going to mean very little. If it is a faith that belonged to our grandparents and we have not internalized it for ourselves, it's going to mean very little. Many people are not confident to speak about their faith even for a short period of time. And I, I have a great sympathy for that, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't overcome some of the challenges and learn to be able to communicate our faith. The best way to practice doing that is probably one-to-one -one in a secure environment where you're not feeling threatened and become uh, at ease with expressing what you believe with somebody who you know well. By doing that, you develop a certain confidence to express and hear the sound of your own voice expressing your own faith. Then it becomes a little easier when you're talking to somebody who you don't know who is asking you, because you're on familiar ground. You've already expressed your faith. One of the most important resources of educating ourselves about our faith is sharing it with each other. We the believers in Christ, we are the church. And when we share our faith with each other, we are exercising an educational process. And that is what makes us confident to go out beyond the body of Christ and be confident to share our faith with, with other people. One of the crucial elements of understanding our faith in order to share it and articulate it is to ask ourselves what are the fundamentals of our faith. What I mean by fundamentals is what are the things that if I take them away or out of my faith, my faith crumbles my faith falls. Answering this question is hugely important for when I share my faith with others, I know what to emphasize. Do I talk about Christ the miracle maker? And for me it is absolutely essential that God, Jesus Christ performed miracles. Or is it more important to talk about God becoming a human being. He taught among us and then he was crucified and died and rose again from the dead. This is a crucial question we should ask ourselves 
and answer in order to go out and be confident in sharing these elements with other people when we are asked or when we are not asked. As Christians, we all know that we live in denominations. How can I communicate the uniqueness of my denomination without saying that the other denom denomination is wrong? It's not about I am right, you are wrong. It's about do I know what other denominations believe? And if I do know, the differences between the denominations, are they fundamentals? This is also a question we need to ask. We need to eradicate the ignorance between the denominations so that when we meet as Christians, at least we have the respect for each other, rejoicing in our differences. We are all the body of Christ. Yes, the Holy Spirit is working through the Christians in different denominations. Yes. What I need is to be true to my tradition. And when I communicate my faith, I communicate it with respect to other traditions and, and other backgrounds. This is the true spirit of being together in Christ. That Christ is the uniting factor, not the institution. When we meet in Christ, we have bigger space to find ourselves in harmony and in love because this love is a response to the love of God in Jesus Christ.